Hello, Nanak here. Welcome back to Stellaris. We are playing as the Woven Pack. We have a nicely unified territory. Raltex are now being dominated by us, and we uh, spent a bit of time um, integrating the Conjodons last episode and dealing with the assorted fleets and ships they got all about. So we currently have a, a scouting fleet over here that's gonna scout the, the area south of the Tarasi principal. We have an eastern scout uh, group that's gonna scout this arm of uh, the galaxy because they're kind of locked on that side. And once we are done with our science tasks, we're probably just gonna move beyond the United Raltec territories and continue scouting our arm of the galaxy. But before we're gonna continue, I'm actually gonna um, just uh, discuss a couple of things I, I double checked in between recording episodes. So I renamed the, the names of the three sectors we have. Because I, I, they used to be named after you know, a certain planet uh, that I picked the first to start the sector, but that, that's just confusing. So now we have the Woven Core, which is where all our Woven planets are located. Then we got the Integrated Hulfir, because this used to be the Hulfir Empire that now actually belongs to us. And over here we got Integrated Kenjodan, which used to be the Kenjodan's space. So that way it's a bit easier uh, to understand, at least for me, uh, what the heck is going on with the different sectors. Because it's, it's a lot easier to, uh, to scan what the woven sector is rather than just a random planet's name. So, um, as I also do frequently, I double-checked the, the pops on all the planets uh, for their ethical stance, um, if they are diverging or not, and re-enslaved all the pops that are diverging and so far um, most of the planets are full so there's not a, lo a lot of opportunities for new pops to spawn that have divergent ethics but we are uh, in the good again then next up slavery i double checked because we are getting a lot of slaves now we have the hofir who have been all enslaved and the kenjodans also have been enslaved which, of course, because they have just been recently conquered, they get a negative 25% happiness penalty, which is really not, not cool. Now, they will start to rise and rebel and revolt if you leave them be. But in time, that is going to wear off. And then they'll no longer be recently conquered. Then, no, that's just life as they know it. And if you look at their modifiers, they are fanatic collectivist. Militarists, they have the exact same core ethics as we have. So I think once the Conjodans can adjust to their life in a new pack, they could actually become valuable members of our woven pack. They, no, oh, they're aliens, so they don't look quite the same as us. But no, they got pointy ears and they got some kind of fur so no they're space space wolves other space wolves we are the space wolves but they like other kind of wolf ish things so i think we might eventually emancipate some of them uh, at least the ones that are you know doing science or energy and that way we get a secondary population that we can send out and the nice thing is they have a desert habitability preference so they can settle on desert uh, arid and tropical planets while we are continental and as such we can uh, settle on tropical and ocean if i remember correctly so between us and the kenjodans we can actually effectively settle a lot of uh, planets so i think integrating the kenjodans and elevating them to be a secondary core species is probably going to be a very very good thing uh, speaking of integrated empires uh, i'm going to select these space balloons they are collectivist fanatical militarists they are almost what we want the thing is they are slightly collectivist but not fanatical collectivist so until we get a, a random mutation that actually makes them into a fanatical collectivist 
I don't think we can do anything with these space balloons. And once we discover uh, how to actually settle on Arctic terrain, we might start popping space balloons. Speaking of popping things, the Raltes or the Raltec, we have integrated them, or we have uh, enslaved them. Well, not enslaved them, we have uh, turned them into a subservient species, a vassal. Yes, that, that's what it is. They are fanatical individualists, uh, mostly materialist. Basically, the fanatical individualist is as far away as they can be from our own. And as a result, they, they really would not be happy integrated in our empire. So I think we are gonna have to keep them as vassals for all eternity. They will not be integrated because they will just not be happy. So. That, that's a, a quick update on just where we are and how we are dealing with the ethical divergence issues because it's I think it's one of the core issues in the game right now to to deal with it it's very important because otherwise you will get factions that will start to rebel against you and because I'm playing a slavery based race slavery is my answer to everything if you have an opinion that diverges from the baseline you become a slave ah, that's a very nice way of shutting things out but the price you pay is that you are going to be less strong in producing energy and research because slaves are very bad at those things speaking of energy we currently have a little bit of an energy crisis going on it's a negative nine it, it's better than what it used to be but it's still costing us quite a bit uh, in addition to checking all the pops I also checked all the build queues and all the planets are now either they already have a solar panel network or they are now building one so in this episode we should get another seven solar panel networks that go online and in total they will produce 21 energy so that that should basically fix our energy needs analyzed and debris okay science vessel excellent you are done with your job that is very good um, and then we go actually uh, my original plan was to send them out to scout the thing is uh, let's see upgrade you first and after that we are gonna have to uh, science scan half of the Kanjodan space because we have a lot of unscanned planets in here, uh, including some that are potentially habitable. What happened there? Scientist Olivier Renaudat has died at the age of 110. That is one old scientist. Which means we need a new one. So let's hit the recruitment button. Expertise, psionics, industry, and a survey speed bonus. Okay, then we might want to double check. We already have two great scouts. So let's see, we already have an industry bonus. So I think we're going to go with the psionics bonus. Just to have someone. And I think psionics is really good for the middle type of research. So, yeah, yours, you've got a spark of genius. So you can just do anything. Oh, also, uh, Talof, you need to be renamed. And you are going to be known as. Tiger Claw, welcome to the Wolven Pack Tiger Claw. I'm sure you'll do fine with a name like that. As one of our science officers. Okay. Let's see, this construction ship has been upgraded. Question is, do we actually need to build something? Yes, actually we do. We have mining stations to build. We have observation posts built, same here, mining stations. So this is going to get us uh, more minerals and more energy, both of which are pretty darn useful to have. Uh, so that's three systems, oh, vestations here. Um, Trablor doesn't have anything. 
And then I think for now that's going to be all the orders that we currently have. But that's fine. Oh, uh, speaking of building things. We have the integrated Kenjodan sector. We are siphoning away 75% of all the production. But the thing is they don't have any stockpiles. Uh, because we have scientists to be our new financial sector. They need, of course, the resources to build and rebuild the buildings. So we're going to pour in a, a lot of uh, minerals. Let's uh, say we give you about 3000 minerals. And energy. We don't have a lot, so we'll go give you 500 to just kickstart you and the rest we're going to keep in our thing itself in our galaxy. Hey, um, we have a first star fleet, which is the previous fleet of the Kinjodans. And I spotted that we have some space cow issues over here. Actually, they are just orbiting around Yoltop, but still, I... I don't think I can tolerate space cows. So, we're gonna attack them. And after that, we're gonna upgrade. If you shift click, you can just queue it afterwards. So, yes, uh, well, hopefully we will deal with them first and then we move on. I mean, the fleet is moving anyway. Might as well use them for something useful. And then, well, it's just a, a matter of waiting. So, one of the reasons I want to integrate the Conjodons is that in our core systems there are already a couple of planets Complete. That are going to be pretty darn useful. If only we have access to the Conjodons and or their uh, colonization tech. I mean, the 60% habitability planet is pretty good. So once we get Irish colonization, that's going to be good. Uh, Olivier, oh wait. Yeah, we already fixed that. Um... Montargi's fin finished, finished building a solar panel network. It still doesn't say it. That, that's slightly annoying, but sure. I think for now, I can probably move at fast speed because we're just waiting for some stuff to happen. Let's see, we have some people leveling up. That's all fine. Are we, how are we doing here? Okay, so we already used about half of the minerals. That's pretty good. Let me resupply you for a bit. Um, the same over there. Well, we are slowly, slowly getting more energy. Are you still chasing after the space cows? Yes, you are. Okay. In that case, we're going to give up on the space cows and we're just going to upgrade. And apparently, Regima is the planet where that is going to happen. I think, let's pause this, I think Kenjor, the Kenjor Prime even, didn't have a maintenance bay? No, it didn't. I remember there, I, I saw one of the systems actually had a maintenance bay. That's not Kenjor. Or was that in Hulfir? Ah, yes, Hufasa has a engineering bay, which of course makes repairs cheaper and faster. Okay, uh, the problem is Hufasa is all the way in the galactic north, so it's really not a good place. Right. We can just move on. Western scouts are out of work to do. Let's have a quick look. After double checking, okay, so all the spaceport upgrades are going to be energy, uh, solar panel networks. And as you see, we're at negative 1 now rather than negative 10. That's pretty cool. Also, we got Combat and Merciless back, so we can do science now. Okay, so we reached the, the southern tip. We have some potentially habitable worlds. So let's see, we need to uh, scout this one, unknown, unknown. Just have to make sure that we uh, have at least touched on all these planets. Let's see. Hobus is no, low, low, low. Okay, so if you hoover over it and there's uh, an eye with a cross, 
through it, then you haven't looked at it yet. If the eye is green, then at least you have looked at it. Makes it easier to scout without waiting for the for the pop-up. Is there anything we still have to even look at? Hmm, 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 hmm. Is there really only one more planet that we have to have a look at? Okay. Well, then do that, and then afterwards we'll uh, we'll see. Come back. Let's see. We have some some space cows. We have more space cows. Okay. Well, unless the space cows start causing trouble, I'm just going to ignore them. Yes, we have some uh, some scouting to do. Uh, we can actually just do that at normal speed for now. Um, I, oh. This one has not been surveyed yet, so, so of course, because it has some grey parts. Survey, 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 survey. And Verstallus and everything else has been... Oh, down here. Then the other science ship is gonna do some uh, some special projects. Because so I think we still have to catch some space Pokemon. Gotta catch them all. Um, I think we did indeed collect them all up here. Just not in the newly conquered areas of space. And after we do that, we can just send them onwards. This is uh, Raltikian. But that's not going to be relevant until we actually get there. So, for now, let's just move on at fast speed again. And uh, scout the important bits. Science completes. Eco simulation. That's going to be farming subsidies tree. So we can really boost food production on a planet where if we want to. Basically translates itself into a temporary happiness bonus. Um, hydroponic farm level 2 means more food production, which means more better growth and or happiness. Um, so no new colonization tech, which is a pity. We have ooh, a quick center basin removal. So that's good. Let's just uh, get all the, the blocking out of the way. So five more months till we got auto cannons and the warp drive is how many months away? That's kind of a ridiculous amount. That's twelve years, eleven years. Ships upgraded. Construction complete. Why did I start on that? Well, why did that look like a good idea at the time? Because I'm kind of obsessed with warp drives, but I think this is just a future, future, future tech. Maybe we should just pick the, the cheapest thing and just work through. So red lasers is going to be yeah, five months. That, that's way more normal. Hey, and we are positive with energy credits. Excellent. Okay, we are now done with some of our production queues. Our secondary fleet has been merged or has been upgraded. So now they are all of our new design, which is pretty good also means we can merge them into the Grand Armada. Western Scouts are on board again. Which I suppose is fine. I mean this is inaccessible space. This is inaccessible. There is no way for them to get back to our space. So maybe we should... How good is this? It's a frigate so that's a... Uh, well, tier 2. Tier 4. X-rays. But tech on this is not quite bad. I mean, for a single ship being worth 90 points is pretty okay, but... If it's all the way over there, it's just gonna cost maintenance, which we don't really want to pay. So I'm actually just going to uh, disband this scout. Oh, yeah, we're done there. We now have auto cannons. Okay. A Teldar ammunition factory. Once we get Teldarian crystals. 
which is yet another strategic resource. Let's see, kinetic weapon damage for ships produced there. That is okay for our primary weapon station. It's also the cheapest option to research right now. Well, space torpedoes only needs 2100 more points. So that, that's a very close second. So for now, we're going to go with uh, Tildarian Ammunition Factory. Um, let's just see if auto cannons are a good option for adding. Hostile fleet detected. Ah, okay. I figured let's uh, let the game continue, but then we instantly get bad news. Okay. So, auto cannons on a small scale range ten. Coil guns have a range twenty. Uh, medium there range twenty, and we are range thirty with our coil guns. Damage output of auto cannons is slightly higher. Accuracy is a bit higher. And the cooldown is a bit lower. So auto cannons hit a shorter range, they hit harder and more often. But it really becomes a brawling weapon while the coil gun strikes a nice balance between range and damage. If you compare it to some, some of the other Technologies is pretty cool. Okay, so auto cannons, they yeah, they're just a uh, ten less than the coil guns. Now the damage bonus on on higher sizes is it's it's fairly okay. But it's, a, it's an interesting trade-off. But we're gonna stick with what we got. So let's continue. Wait, we oh, ah, stop happening. The Quasibor successor state. You also look like space balloons. First contact. Wolven, how delightful. We hadn't expected to encounter you for a few centuries yet. Personally, I thought you would wipe yourself out long before leaving your gravity well. But I'm glad to be proven wrong. <sighs> okay. one of uh, Yet another one of those smug aliens that think we are just inferior. We will fight for our right to exist, whatever you are, space balloon. Oh. Also, apparently they are located in this appendage of the universe. They got satrimming gas. Oh, okay. So, our eastern scouts are gonna have to retreat. They're probably missing an action for now. Hey, wow, they actually got teleported over to Ampaldir. Wow, that is cool. So that means we can just merge them. But, uh. Okay, so we did all the scouting we, we could. I'm very happy I just went through in a rather organized fashion. We have some potentially habitable worlds, even continental worlds. There's two of those. But these are really not the happy, happy neighbors. So let's uh, have a look at distance. They are the... They are stagnant ascendancy. That is, so that indicates they are a fallen empire. And they're pretty overwhelming. I think it's good not to get on their bad side. Let's uh, establish an embassy. Now, if you can't defeat them, at least make sure they don't try to defeat you before you're ready. Oh no, there are space cows in Quam. We got two space bases here. I don't think we have a lot to fear from these uh, space cows. Okay, so the Grand Armada is just chilling here in Ampaldir. The other ones are merging in. So we're gonna get a pretty strong Armada, cleared, uh, almost 5000 points. But the thing is, it's not enough. If we compare ourselves with our nearest neighbors. So we got the Raltek. They are pathetic. Well, we defeated them in battle. So that that's sure. The Terassi are also inferior and pathetic. The Fallen Empire is overwhelming. But that's kind of what they are meant to be. 
Then indirect democracy, they are pathetic. In inferior. They have an equivalent fleet power. Okay, so the bull hubs we need to. Oh. Oh, hey! Admiral Kate died, which is actually not the Admiral we wanted to have died. That that's unfortunate. Um So we still have our ab our uh, fleet being led by the great Admiral Pender, which is interesting. But now we also don't have a, a fallback uh, Admiral. Let's see if we can uh, if we can try this again. So we have a trickster or a resilient leader. 10% extra evasion is not quite bad and less damage from emergency FTL. Uh, well, let's, uh, let's spend it and let's see if we can assign you. Ooh, Damung actually stuck. That's good. Yay! We finally managed to get rid of Admiral Pender, the, the ever-seeing, all-seeing Admiral of the Wolven. So that's good. Okay, so currently things are progressing rather peaceful. Let's see, this one was upgraded, wasn't it? No, it's just chilling but not upgrading. What? Okay, can not move you over there? Yes, we can. Oh, excellent. That means we can send the signed ships to this and actually check out all these potentially habitable worlds. Which is good. Ooh, red lasers. Red lasers shoot faster, if I remember correctly. We are not getting access to any more cheap technologies, so we're gonna continue just dealing with some of the, the cheaper ones in our queue over here. Let's see, I think we have less to research for the green crystals. Hey, a lot of stuff happened here. So we found another space Pokemon and that was the last one we needed. So we are now done with the alien, alien specimen procurement event and we gained 500 energy research of energy credits and society research and we gained 40 influence. That is pretty cool. That is pretty cool. Also, our science ship is now done. Also, station is under attack. Wait, what? Okay. So, that must be over there. Wait, what? Space cows. You're attacking a mining station. Are you kidding me? In my capital world, you are attacking. This is rather embarrassing, isn't it? Can we? Okay, I think for now we're gonna split our main fleet for a little bit. Just have to have some, some response of fleets for and if we get into into war we can always merge them up again of course so let's uh, take a destroyer and one two three four five six corvettes let's give you some raiders as well uh, raiders are no oh, things we just got from events and things like that so we might as well use them in a fleet are they all the raiders i believe so so, first armada. This is going to be our northern response uh, fleet. Okay, and then you are going to go to Otmar and you're going to get a aggressive stance. And if any cows show up, you shoot them. Might be a bit too late for this fleet though, 
for this uh, station. But, well, I can't always deal with everything. Also because we mobilized a small fleet, we are consuming more energy now. Which I think is uh, acceptable. Speaking of energy, we had one of our sectors dedicated to energy production. Yes, so you probably want a couple more minerals. Yes, yes. Also, let's just uh, stock everybody up on minerals. I mean, we are gathering plenty of minerals. Might as well do something with it. And give you a bit more energy as well. We have quite some still. Of course, we gained a bunch of energy from uh, an event recently. All right, and then we go back to science. And as I, as I said, we're going to survey the interesting planets up here first. So you are going to survey uh, this system. And this system. That's a tomb world. This is an arid world. And this is... There's a continental world over here. So, interesting worlds first, and then we are going to survey all the nearby worlds. Okay, so the, the eastern front is now charted out, and we have to be careful that we don't upset our new neighbors. These, uh, these folks too much. So, they are xenophiles so that works hugely in our favor they don't like our slavery and purge policies but that balances each other out so our embassy is going to generate us plus 100 just out of the box and as long as we don't get our uh, borders um, crossing uh, too closely that's going to stay the same uh, otherwise we get border tension but on the other hand so border tension up to 100 points we can deal with we have researched quicksand basin removal, of course, because we had a massive bonus to society research. And we got more tile blockers. Let's see. They are cheapest. Let's see. This is going to happen on ice planets. This is going to happen on desert planets. I think we, the Kanjodans are going to um, settle deserts for us. So this is probably going to be slightly more relevant slightly earlier because the the Hulfir are our ice settlers and they're not going to get integrated anytime soon so Tau City is currently just moving through also where is our northern response fleets oh okay so what are you doing you're gonna go after the next mining fleet aren't you yes of course you are you silly space cows Ah, they just arrived. Excellent. Kill them all. Kill them all. We have a construction ship which is going to get killed for a building that. The Dapulan civilization encountered. Yeah, detected. Ah, pre space. Okay. That's okay. I think we still have a, a whole queue of pre space civilizations that we have to build observation posts for. But for now, yeah. Not care overly much. Anomaly found. Anomaly found. Risk failure is acceptable. Abandoned ship. Let's uh, see what it has to offer. Okay, so space cows are trying to eat my mining station. Yeah, see, this is the, the, the energy absorption heal beam that they got. And you see the, the healing icons and so. That is pretty cool. Pretty cool as a mechanic. But the thing is, our northern response fleet is not amused by this. And as a result, space cows are going to become space cow steaks. Yes, yes. Shoot them good, shoot them hard, shoot them dead. Let's see if the, the post combat screen is going to... is actually fixed now. Because during the, the early bits of the 1.1 beta patch, the... There were some issues with, with evasion ratings Complete. and hit rates, but I think it, it's better now. It's not a 0 or 100 now. So 
So nothing actually shot at us. They never actually evaded anything. Okay, I'll deal with you in a bit later. Let's. Wait, I was looking at this. So. One space whale got shot by the station, I think. Because it's gone, but not by us. They didn't really do a lot of damage. We did a lot of damage, mostly to the hull, some to the armor, nothing to shields. And we hit 62% of the time. And the raiders using energy weapons actually hit a lot more than our kinetic weapons. Okay, pretty cool. So point defense. Oh, we actually used our point defenses offensively, which is also cool. If you get close enough, you c they will start shooting. But they're not very, uh, not very accurate. Just meant to uh, spray and pray. Let's see, area has been fully surveyed. Let's see, solar sailor. We have discovered an abandoned solar sail ship in orbit around uh, Ginigan. 4a the sublight vessel was built by an unknown culture and appears to be several thousand years old one of the massive sails has a large tear where some kind of object passed through most likely a meteorite which appears to have disabled the vessel although the technology of the ship is severely outdated it does possess some interesting engineering design choices we get 150 engineering points i approve So our uh, ship is now gonna do guard duty in Atmar. And we have a construction ship that's on its way to rebuild the mining station we just lost. So life is still pretty darn good, even though our space cows ate our homework. Um, I mean our mining station. Turamba has a continental world, so let's actually build ourselves a colony ship it's been a while uh, let's not do it here though because Ampol uh, Siltum's fortress in Ampol Deer over here it only has ethically divergent uh, wolves also we got an ammunition factory okay lots of stuff happening at the same time now let's take a quick step back so space torpedoes is half researched on the other hand railguns are the next technology that we actually want and it's the same price so for now we're gonna research railguns they are gonna be pretty useful what did we do we had the the teldar ammunitions factory I don't think our system currently contains Teldarian crystals. So we can't really do much with it. We'll just have to uh, wait and see. And our uh, neighbors. Ooh. The Raltec have a Teldar crystal. That's annoying. They actually have quite two bits of it. And yeah, these guys have satomine gas. Well, we'll, uh, we'll have to see what we can do with this. But for now, it's a technology that, that was nice to research, but doesn't actually help us. Um, yeah, Ample Deer, they had ethically divergent woven, which the thing is we can't do anything with it until we actually uh, get five woven over here. Ah, so you are actually a collectivist like the only one that is allowed to spawn new wolves uh, it's it's the least divergent one that that's basically why i was going for it so once we got this one we got five we can just enslave everybody else and then from our home world uh the wolves can just move over here and actually settle it with proper wolves and now we can just slowly purge them one by one until all the wolves are good again just like we're doing over here the wolf is going to regrow and once we have this one then i'm just going to purge a random slave until all the slaves have been replaced with proper wolves it's uh not the nicest of things but it works and you never argue with results also we have a aggressive observation yes yes and we Can't actually do much with it. Hey, 
We'll just keep uh, aggressively observing them and we'll get a bunch of cultural research from it. That's fine. Oh yeah, we were building those in the in the area. Um, final, final thing. Let's see, maybe something like... No, not Astarte. Here. We have Findemans Outpost. Which should actually have proper wolves as well. Yeah. So, these are just proper wolves. Fanatic, Collectivist, Militarist. And we'll just uh, queue up... Let's say three... Colony ships. So I believe there were about three things here that were interesting to colonize. Continental world, continental world, and potentially a continental world over here. But we'll have to see about that. So once we got those, we can just uh, instantly colonize what needs to be colonized. But that's going to be in a future episode, because we've been going on for long enough. So episode, we just mostly just... Uh, reorganized dealt with some some internal stuff and we finally have the upgraded science ships to start exploring beyond our previous boundaries also means that this entire bit over here where we actually have identified a, a gaia world a desert world and another desert world so the gaia world we can actually colonize with our wolven and then we have a a foothold over here and then we can just slowly start expanding again. So the future is looking pretty bright for the Wolven Pack. But how bright it is going to look, we'll have to see you again next time. So thanks for watching and see you next episode.